if you haven't ever um, had the opportunity to be, to be on those, they just spark joy. There's so much excitement and energy and you can feel it through, through the speakers. You can feel it through the comments and everyone um, on the morning motivation calls are amazing. Um, we have these calls in the evenings on Tuesday nights. The opportunity uh, meeting is, is amazing as well. I learned something every week, something new, um, you know, so the, the calls, are important to, it's just important to never miss anything. Um, and if you aren't sure, if you're new and you aren't sure what time, um, like Ms. Fleetner said, we're in different time zones. Um, and so just get with the person that, that added you to Team Alliance and they can help you with that. Um, as far as giving, number two is to give um, one to two presenta presentations a day. Um, and this can be many different things. This could be talking to someone. Um, I, I was at Sonic getting a drink today and, um, and I was given a presentation talking to someone um, on FaceTime. You know, it doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing, just get the information out there. Be excited about it. Share that information because people need what we have and people are looking for it. And so to present, to be a to present is actually a blessing for us that we get to share the excitement to share the energy to share this business and it's it's not just about the business it's about changing people's lives and that's what we need to do and so presenting and another great thing about presenting is that every time you do it you get better and so you know practice makes perfect and before you know it it just it rolls off the tongue you're you're able to to do it from memory and those are great things to have in your back pocket in your toolbox so that you can present wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Um, number three is to read 30 minutes a day. I have a vast um, library. Like Ms. Fleetner said, I've been in network marketing in somewhere or another for about 20 years. And so if you ever need something to read, I have a whole library. I'd be glad to share resources with you that have helped me through the years um, and build several businesses. So um, reading 30 minutes a day, it, it centers you. It brings you back to the reason that you do this business. Um, if you haven't read GoPro by Eric Worre, that's one of my favorites. Um, I would definitely start there. Um, call your upline and your downline daily. And I can't express this enough. Um, it, it, it's an energy boost. It's an amazing feeling when you call your upline and they say, you know what, let's try this. Let's do this. You know, if you're, if you're stumped and you're not sure, why is my business not taking off? What is it that I need to be doing? What is it that I need to be sharing differently? Um, and your upline is there and they, and they want to help you. And so having that connection every day and it, it, you know, I do text messaging or a message on Facebook. It doesn't necessarily have to be a call, although that is the best um, because you feel the energy through a call. And so that's always great to have in your back pocket as well. Um, 700 PV and that's in your personal volume is what that stands for. And I don't know if, if everyone knows this, the new people on the call, but to get to the very highest ranking within this company, you only have to do $700 in personal volume a month. So that is huge. The last company that I was with, I had to do, uh, I think it was 3,500 or 4,000 a month to be at the top ranking, which I was never able to achieve because that's almost unheard of. And our company, you know, Dr. Lance London has, has planned this so well that for $700 a month in PV, you can get all the way to the top with this company. So that's super exciting and super just amazing. If you've ever been with another um, company, but that's usually so much higher than that. So, so that's the 700 personal volume. Um, number six is always have respect and integrity. And if you're new to the company, you probably notice that we call each other Mr. and Mrs. and Miss. And that is the respect that Dr. Lance Lennon has instilled in us through the founders. Um, it's sir, it's ma'am, it's respectful. And that's the way we carry out our business and everything that we do. Um, you know, if you're making a phone call, you know, it just, it makes people feel special. Also, if you, if you talk to them in that sort of way, um, it just brings people up to be called Mr. or Mrs. Um, it's respectful respectful and it's definitely integrity and that's the way that we do everything on Team Alliance. And last but not least is always have explosive energy, excitement, and enthusiasm. And if you've listened to Miss Fleetner who brought me up, she's she's amazing at this. She is a, a natural cheerleader. Um, I just love to hear her talk. Mr. Brown is the same way. Um, if you know Mr. Brown, he is he is full of energy and excitement and enthusiasm and he loves 
we love what we do here and it just comes out and you know you've probably noticed the entire time that I've been talking I've had a smile on my face and that's because people can read how you feel about something and when you're excited and you're energetic and enthusiastic it's it just it comes through whether you're on the phone or or any way so um that's the seven uh, core values for Team Alliance and I'm glad that you've all come to this call back to you Miss Fleetner Great job, Ms. Trasper. Awesome, Ms. Trasper. Thank you. Good job, Ms. Trasper. Yeah. Oh, oh, you nailed it. Good job, good job. Very nice. Awesome. Guys, she's one of those up Mm-hmm. We're going to hear a lot of this, young ladies. So thank you. Very good job, Ms. Trasper. I want to apologize. Um, my son, it was football season right now here because of... Um, because of what COVID happened. And so when I share my screen, I'm not able to mute myself. So what happened was, is my son is, he's done with football practice a half hour early and needs a ride. And I was panicking because I'm his ride. And um, so forgive me guys about that. I wasn't able to mute myself to my, my personal issues here at home, but thank you, Ms. Trasper for just jumping on and, and going forward. I, I truly, truly, you're awesome. Thank you. So what I get to bring with you guys today, which is um, we're gonna, we've been doing this transition now of doing some of the product testimonials. I get to do my favorite product testimonial. I do have a slideshow for you guys presented, but the first thing I wanna do is just kind of show you before we start our slideshow, how important it is. Just remember why it is so important to have these, these little travel packs. And I'm gonna tell you why as we're going through the slideshow, okay? So this is calming. I get to do the calming support today, which is near and dear to my heart. So I'll go ahead. I'm going to screen share. So, so, so we, uh, <laughs> we'll get this, we'll get through this. So it'll just take me a second here, guys, to get everything situated again. You can just see some of my uh, success is the best revenge. That's kind of one of my, uh, why is it? It's coming, I promise. Oops, if it'll let me. It'll let me. It's always me who does the does it. Hmm. Okay, let me try it a different way. Okay, sorry about this, guys. So what I love about calming support in general is the fact that we have thunderstorms coming right now. Um, possibly because it's actually 80 degrees in Wisconsin, which is kind of, is pretty unheard of for this time of the year. And so that is one of the reasons why I'm so eager to talk about, about our, our calming support today. So, all right, I should be situated. Thanks you guys for being so patient with me. All right. I'm going to become a pro at this eventually. So, um, so calming support, you guys have heard this quite a bit. Uh, and it, like I said, it's very, very near and dear to my heart. Part of the reason I love it so much is it's one of our few products that you actually can see results within 25 to 30 minutes. That's pretty impressive. Most of our supplements, we, we ask that they stay, that the clients keep their pets on it for at least 60 to 90 days, because just like with, you know, when, just like you and I, if we're taking a vitamin or a supplement, you're not going to, it's not going to go in the system until, you know, you're not going to start seeing results for, for quite some time where with the calming support clients are going to be floored, floored. Uh, this is one of the, my favorites, both uh, groomer favorites, a lot of the veterinary favorites, because like I said, it depended on the way you, you give this little chewy, this yummy little chewy. And then 25 to 30 minutes later, you're already seeing a much more relaxed dog. Okay. There's some great ingredients to it. The one that I, that primarily I tell people because they can relate to is one called L-tryptophan. That's, that's that ingredient in Turkey at, you know, Thanksgiving time, or when you eat Turkey, it all of a sudden, you know, while you're like, Oh, I'm so relaxed. I'm so tired. You just can't, 
that's l tryptophan that is what has been scientifically proven to show that it just kind of slows everything down slows that brain chemistry down a little bit it also has that effect with our dogs um so what what you're going to want is so when your patient or when your clients are talking about um separation anxiety thunderstorm anxiety that's a big one um any sort of stress related events going to the groomers going to the vet car rides, new people coming over. I have a customer who she uses it, believe it or not, when she goes to take her dog for a walk because she gives it and then 25 minutes later takes her dog for a walk because then her dog is calm. It's not jumping and it's not excited. It's not, you know, you know turn around trying to bite the leash. It just goes for a nice calm walk. Um, and so these are some of the things that I think about. Um, I love, and I was talking to uh, Mr. Pullian earlier today, shelter pets. I can see, I would love to see our calming support in every single shelter, every foster organization. I would love to see it uh, being sold to new pet parents who are rescuing animals as well. Uh, Ms. Griffiths can tell you wonderful stories about her Tigger, who was a rescue. Uh, and I've seen the results. He's a completely different dog because of calming support. Uh, my favorite, 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 and this is why, and this is why I was telling you guys that this is my favorite things to always, always have with me when it comes to samples, because the first thing when you're talking to people, I'm gonna, I would say, gosh darn it, I bet 80% of the time, that's just my statistic. That's just me being me and throwing one out there. There's no, you know, there's no proof behind the statistic. But when you're talking to people, the first thing they're gonna tell you is, oh, my duck has separation anxiety. It's gonna have something reducing, re something to do with needing to calm down, okay? Now, there's lots of things and lots of reasons and that are, you know, besides exercise, you know, we all know that pets need exercise. They need, you know, there, there's other things that need more enrichment training and stuff like that. But what, what calming does is it helps to train the brain to be calm in these stressful situations. So like you're having a stress, let's say you have a stressful situation that you're in and you're getting a back massage. You know, one of those nice, deep, it feels so good. You could probably, you could probably handle that stressful situation if you can relax and have that massage, right? So it kind of helps to train the brain and it works and, and people get that instant gratification and the sense that they see those results. What's different about ours is, and I've tried everything. I'm actually going to show you here. I'll go back to, this is my Nelly. So uh, I just want to give a personal testimonial out there about my Nelly. She, we got her, gosh, does she look chunky in that picture, doesn't she? She's really not that chunky, I swear. But um, so she's a golden retriever. We got her when she was six years old. She was a professional breeding dog. What that means is her first three years, she lived with an Amish in an Amish farm uh, in one of those little six by six kennels with her sister. Uh, and only, they only came out to breed. That's the only time they were really allowed out of their kennels. They peed, they pooped everything in a kennel. Well, from that situation, her and her sister went to another professional breeding facility. Well, this facility was clean. Um, and well, more, you know, well taken care of, I guess you could say, she still wasn't socialized. All she knew was kennel life. And so when she was retired from breeding at six years of age, actually, I think she was a little older than that when we finally got her, they just, re you know, gave her to the first home. And I knew that this dog would not fare well. You know, she had never heard of TV. She had never heard of fan. You know, she didn't know this kind of environment. So I just, we got her. So long story short, this poor girl had such severe when I say severe, you guys, she would, a storm would be coming. She'd be in every corner of my house trying to scratch, like scratch at the floor where her nails were bloody. They were actually, I mean, just this constant and this panting. It was so sad. The only thing that would calm her down is if I would, would physically have to lay like almost on top of her, like next to her on top of her, and she would just shiver the whole time. And as you guys know, I've been in the veterinary field for 20 years. So I have tried everything. When I say I've tried everything, you guys, I have tried everything to help her. So when, when I joined in and, and I'm not sure how many of you guys know this, but I joined in on the $5, the $5, five for five kind of deal. Calming support was, was the product that I chose. Um, and Lena's to say, I think, um, I brought every product in between there within a month. <laughs> so I was so impressed with the calming support. 25 minutes later, you guys, she was laying. This is a picture of her during, in the middle of a thunderstorm. In a middle of a thunderstorm, this is my Nelly. 
that she's just laying there. So to me, calming support is, is one of the easiest things to give. And it's one of the most impressive samples to give somebody because they see those immediate results. Does anybody have any questions about the calming support? I'm not able to see the chat right now. So if you wanted to unmute yourself, could you? Uh, sure. Oh, no questions? Okay. So the next one I'm going to go ahead and cover today, guys, is tea. So Dr. Kroll, you know, covered, covered our dental, some of our dental products a few weeks back. I'm going to kind of give you a short, um, short recap of all three, because I love how all three of them work together. And there's kind of two different ways to, to utilize them, but, um, or three, it, it, we'll talk about it. So we, as a veterinary professional, I, and I don't have to tell you guys, dog breath is horrible. <laughs> you guys know that it doesn't take, it, you know, it doesn't take a veterinarian to tell you like, you know, like, dog breath stinks. If there's something wrong with your dog's breath, you know, and you smell it, then there's usually something wrong inside as well. So dental, the dental system is one of my, my favorite things as well. I'm very, something I'm very passionate about because I've seen, and I've been in those mouths and have seen teeth pulled and just seen the wear and the tear of people not brushing their dog's teeth. Do I brush my dog's teeth? No, I have spent, I have spent so many hours of my life telling people and showing people how to brush their dog's teeth. And I'm the biggest hypocrite because I don't do it, but I'm okay with that now because I do have the Nevetica dental system. And this is by far, and I, I would probably swear in my life when I say this, probably swear in my life, but this is the best system that's out there. It's not the garbage that you see in, in our competitors' things. And I will never name our competitors' names. Uh, this stuff is real. This stuff is, has nutritional value. It's not garbage. Like Dr. Kroom, said, Dr. Kroom has said, it's not, it doesn't end up in the stomach just like a ball of carbohydrates just sitting in the stomach. There are nutritional benefits to our dental program besides the fact what they're working on their teeth. So now this next picture I have, guys, I am going to give you a warning. It's pretty disgusting. So um, if you have a queasy stomach, it is, it is a human mouth that has never had their teeth brushed after years and years, okay? So if you need to turn your heads, please turn your heads. It is pretty gross. What I want you to do, I'm switching it now. What I want you to do is imagine if that was your mouth and you would never brush your teeth, okay? What I want you to think about when you're talking to your clients, I want you to think of this mouth. Because let me tell you something, those little small breeds, this is what we see when we anesthetize them and put them when they're under gas anesthetic and we get in there. Is it quite this bad? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times there's hair intertangled with that. But this is the important. So this is what your mouth could look like if you did not brush your teeth. You spent a lifetime not brushing your teeth. Okay. I'll get off of that now. So this is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate. So the dental... <sighs> When you go to the dentist, how many of you know somebody, or you might be one of them that have been told that you need to be on antibiotics before they do any sort of dental work on you? And again, I'm sorry, I can't see in the chat, but if, if that's, if you know of somebody, please put a five in the chat. The reason this is, is because, and I don't know if you guys can see this and forgive me, I'm a very visual person, but in, on, in your gums, in the gum line there, you know how, it, 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 is it direct? Those are direct, any bacteria that's in your mouth, is a, it's a direct line through the bloodstream to your heart. Okay, so it's so very important. And that's kind of in simple terms. It's so important to keep the mouth clean, free from bacteria and debris. So what is awesome about one, we have our water additive, right? Not only is it mint flavored, and of course it helps the breath smell great, but it acts as a mouthwash and it helps to get under that gum line. Okay, we also have our small dental chews. So these little chews are great for those little small mouths. Um, those little small mouths, I think of poodles, dachshunds, um, just think of anything with the chihuahuas. Those mouths breed, are perfect breeding grounds for that bacteria. And it's just, it, and I, I would say, honestly, with small dogs, you should any, I would have your clients having um, their pets on these, these as early as puppyhood because they are so prone to horrible, horrible dental disease. Horrible, and I'm talking, you know, by the time the dog's 14, 15, I mean, you're talking, you know, almost 
teethless. Toothless, is that the better word? So the way I use it though, we do have a large dental tooth as well. This does not necessarily mean for a large dog, this acts more of a toothbrush, okay? And this, so this acts more of a toothbrush that actually breaks that tartar down. So it's kind of two ways to utilize this product. I know some people prefer to do either the small or the large dental tube. What I like to do is I like to have my, my clients or my customers, and, you, and, it, and it's up to you, you'll, you'll figure out what works best for them, is give, I do one of the small dental treats per day. You can give up to two of them and depending on their weights and their sizes. And then what I do with the small breeds is I still ask them to give the large dental tubes because again, this these two, the large and the small, are not made the same. There are different, there are less ingredients in the large one. So, so there's still there's still a lot of benefit with them as well. If you have a larger dog, like a large breed dog, what I do is I break the small dental treats into their food because that way you're still gonna get that. We have a, an ingredient in there called uh, spirulina. That is so, such a potent, potent, potent. Um, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, it's a, from an algae. And so that is so potent that it actually has anti-inflammatory properties to it. So like if you look on this mouth that's out there, you can see the difference in inflammation just in that time frame. So a lot of that has to do with both the mint and the, the water additive that helps with that. So mint has an, so like the water additive because the mint not only is great for anti-inflammation, it's also great for nausea. So if you have a dog that likes that is vomiting a lot, this also helps with that. There's so many benefits. I can't even tell you. Spirulina has also, so if you have a dog that's diabetic, now we can't, you gotta be careful with this, but it is completely safe with dogs with diabetes. And humans, it's been shown to actually help to, to control, um, help, help. Yes, you gotta you have to use the word help there with blood sugars. So there's so many additives, or sorry, so many um, amazing things that it goes into our uh, dental products that as a three-way, it just completely, let's just say your clients are going to be your, their veterinarian's favorite, favorite person in the whole world if they're doing the dental system. That's how important this is. Uh, think, think of liver, kidney issues, if there's, a, if there's bad things going on with the teeth. Oh my gosh, I can't even... Um, Anything else, you guys? I mean, of course, fresh breath. That's nice, right? We love fresh breath. So um, any questions that you guys can think of with when it comes to dental? I tried to keep that kind of brief because we have discussed it before in the past. Hopefully, I didn't gross everybody out when I was talking to, when I showed the, the um, oh, gosh, yes. Thank you, Ms. Dinesh. Our small dental treats are great for cats as well. And cats do go crazy over this. So I do highly recommend this for kitties because kitties do also, a lot of them have a lot of inflammation um, along their gum lines from that bacteria. And so if you're noticing those red gums, get mention the uh, uh, dental chews to your clients as well. This is wonderful. So anything else you guys can think of? Do you have any questions? And of course, if you have any questions, you always can contact both myself, Dr. Kroom, Ms. Dine, or Ms. Dinesh, I'm sorry, Ms. Dinesh, Ms. Vet Tech Tony. We are your three veterinary professionals that are, are on board with Team Alliance. So I think what I'll do with that is I'm going to go ahead. Um, I have a quick comment. Yes, yes. Awesome, awesome job. Thank you so much, Ms. Fleener. I was going to say for the big dental chews, they are mm -hmm. actually um, only like 15 in there. But for those people, because they're only meant to be taken every other day, but I know a lot of people break it in half and give it every day. So that's something you could tell your customers and your clients as well. Thank you, Ms. Mm -hmm. Fleetner. Mm -hmm. You bet. Oh, you bet. Right. And there's lots of different ways to do it. We have, and the dental system doesn't have to all be utilized together either to be beneficial for your clients. So yeah. So, I mean, it, it's great. Oh, and we do have we do have them in bundles as well. So if you're looking at your back office, it is cheaper for your customers to order them perhaps with, I believe it comes in the large and then it also comes in a small bundle. So that is definitely something to be aware of because you know your customers are definitely gonna want to save money as much as they can. So thank you, Ms. Feline, I appreciate it. So we also, we get to hear from Mr. Andre Brown today, which I'm so excited for, especially since there's some, some uh, so many new, uh, New pet consultants, welcome. Oh my gosh, this is so incredible to, to be one of the first people 
So um, I'm just so excited. Welcome, welcome to the family, welcome to the team. This is Mr. Andre Brown, who you will definitely want to get to know. We are very blessed that this is a ground floor company and that we have access to him. That means you have access to him as well. Okay, Mr. Andre Brown, are you available? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. How you doing? All right, get excited. Listen, you know, I'm, you know, just as Ms. Fleeter said, I got to give it back to her first and foremost. She came with the energy, okay? That gets me so pumped up. It gets me so excited, you know? It's nothing like getting around a bunch of group of winners that gets you pumped up and gets you excited about life and excited about what you're doing, you know? And just to, just to have that energy transferred to you, because remember, energy is never lost. It's only transferred. You know, if you ever walk into a room and everyone's all negative and, and down and, and, you know, you feel it when you walk in and you go, Ugh, I don't feel comfortable being here, right? But then you are walk in the opposite room where everybody's all positive, it's fun, it's excitement, it's good energy, like, oh, this is my type of feel, right? Yeah, I like this, you know? And you kind of get comfortable. Yes, that's how it feels every time I go on this call with a group of winners, you know, a group of just exciting people, excited about life, excited about their business, excited about everything that they can do to, you know, just take their life to the next level, take this business to the next level, help their pets and help people as much as possible. So that being said, great job, Ms. Fleeting, open the call. My goodness, Ms. Trosper, my goodness, you know, fantastic job going over the five core, the seven core values, you know, phenomenal job. Um, welcome to all the brand new reps. Okay, you know, I'm excited to have you on here and I'm gonna make a couple announcements that it's gonna get you guys excited. You know, pay attention to um, a few of the contests, okay, that we're gonna be doing uh, in the near future because my goodness, the Merge Alliance is known to definitely get and partake in some contests. Does that make sense? You know, <laughs> you hear some contests, you will see Merge Alliance leaders all over it. You know, it's phenomenal, it's awesome, okay? Um, so stay tight, I'll talk more about that as we get closer to the end of the call, but here's what I did want to share, right? Dr. Linda put a special out there, and that's why many of you got involved, where you get started for $5 in the purchase of a product or two, you know, or more if you desire to get involved with more, all right? Now, many of you took advantage of that opportunity, which is why I'm very proud of you for taking that step, okay? But I do want to say this, please, whatever you do, do not treat this like a $5 business. That makes sense? Do not treat this like a $5 business. I don't care if you came in for $675. Do not treat this like a full metal jacket business. Don't treat it like a $675 business. No, absolutely not. Why? Because very easily, this business can lead you to five, six, seven, eight, a thousand dollars a month. Then turn into $2,500, $3,000 a month, $10,000, $12,000 a month, $20,000. $25,000 a month, okay? And the way you get there is by helping other people. Does that make sense? But in order to get there, your mindset needs to be in the right area, okay? It needs to be in the right arena. And number one, the first thing you have to do is number one, you have to learn how to become an entrepreneur. You know, you probably hear stuff like this all the time and it sounds cliche, but it's so true. It's so, so true. And I wish I could like give you a pill, you know, with a glass of water where you could drink it. You go, oh my goodness. Oh, I, I understand exactly what he's saying. When I say you have to learn how to be an entrepreneur and it starts with the mindset, the way you think, the way you approach things, the way you look at things, you know? See, we went our whole life, you know, going through school based off what? Hey, whatever they tell you to do, that's what you need to do. Does that make sense? You know, they tell you study this, that's what you do. You study so that way you can pass a test, right? You don't get a test to see how creative you can be. You don't get a test to see how consistent you can be. There's no test to see, you know, how, how you know, uh, 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 just revolutionary you can be. And let's look at sports. That's probably the closest thing when you're growing up in school to be, you know, considered entrepreneurship. But what you are doing, you're being taught how to what? Clock in and clock out. Does that make sense? How to do what it is that you're told. And see, when we go into a job, that's what we're used to. We've mastered that. Does that make it? We've mastered it. Come on now. Everybody here had a job at least once in their life where you know how to go in and do what you're told to do, right? You do just enough not to get fired, right? Come on now, okay? And you do what? They pay you enough for you not to quit. Okay, <laughs> that's the definition of a nine to five. Congratulations, you've mastered it, 
right? And because of that, so many people deal with the consequences of having more month at the end of their money, you know? And as, for, as unfortunate as that is, you know, there's a solution. And the solution is called what? The American dream. The solution is called what America was designed to be, you know, and created for, which is having your own business, being an entrepreneur, taking your life into your own hands. And I don't know if you understand, but, you know, back in the early 1900s, do you realize that 90% of individuals had their own business? And only 10% of people worked for someone? It wasn't until they created the school systems when it switched over to the total opposite, the, the industrial age, when people said, oh, you know what, I'll go work in a big manufacturing plant. And they'll just pay me hourly versus me having my own business. And that was the transition from everyone going independent, working for themselves, to now working under other people, okay? But guess what? The ones that stayed independent, that stayed on the edge, that stayed in entrepreneurship, they grew. They became the Rothschilds of the world. Does that make sense? You know, they became those big names that you always see, the Walmarts and all these things that you go, oh, I've heard of them before. I know them. I know that name, right? The DuPonts of the world. How many of y'all heard that name before? DuPont, right? These are all major names of people that stayed in that entrepreneurial stage while everyone else was starting to go into the nine to five. Because of that, they reaped the benefits, okay? Now, unfortunately, well, it's fortunate as well. People are starting to get tired of it. They're tired of living paycheck to paycheck. And they're starting to look for a solution now. They're starting to realize, hey, me just slaving away at a job is not paying my bills. So there has to be an alternative. And that's why we decided to create our company, the Vetica, your pet's choice. We said, why not create something, right, where we can create the benefit the people that created, but why not benefit the people around us as well? Does that make sense? We could have went the traditional route. Sure, we could have just put it on Amazon and put it on eBay. We said, no, let's work with the individuals around us. Where if they try the product, they realize how good it is, how great it can be, how effective it is. Why not create a partnership with them where they can tell others and they grow with us? So as we grow and we become what? A billion dollar company? You better believe we're going to create millionaires. It's part of the compensation plan. It's part of said There's no way that we're going to grow to become a billion dollar company without creating millionaires. It's guaranteed. The question is, who's it going to be? Does that make sense? Okay, come on now. So with that in mind, that leads me to this. I want to actually go into detail on if that's you, okay? What do you need to do to put yourself in position to reap the benefits, okay? Because there's a few things you want to do. When you look at the compensation plan, you'll realize in order for me to maximize, right? In order for me to get to that million dollar status, I need to build what? Leverage, okay? Sure, you can strive and put in years and years and years of effort to trying to get millions of dollars worth of customers on, on auto ship if you want, or you could bring in 1,000, 2,000 people within your organization, right? And everybody just does a little bit. Does that make sense? And you get a chance to make a lot. That way everybody's getting a check. Does that make sense? Well, everyone that's working, okay? And so that means you need to do this. Number one, first, you need to learn how to sell your products, okay? You need to learn how to sell. You want to master getting no less than $700 a month, okay? And anything over 700, when you start getting 800 or more, you get extra bonuses on your sales, okay? But if you master $700 a month, it doesn't matter where you go in the compensation plan, you have the minimum requirement to hit that level. Okay, so that's number one. You want to learn how to master the sales. And number two, you want to learn how to become a master teacher. Okay, become a master teacher, a master leader. Now, there's different levels of leadership. Now, I can go into this. And some of y'all, y'all have experienced it before. You walk into a job and someone is a manager and all they have is just the title. Does that make sense? Nothing about them says manager but the title. Nothing about it says supervisor, but the title. They're lazy. They don't want to do nothing. They're telling you to do all this stuff, and they don't ever want to work, right? You, you sit there and you wonder, how did they even get in that position? I work way harder than them, you know? You've seen it before. If not you, you have know someone that has been in that position where they know that person. Does that make sense? Hopefully it's not you, okay? <laughs> right? 
Now, that being said, that's the first level of leadership, the absolute worst level of leadership, okay? But then you got another level, right? Where when you get to the second level, people, what, like that person as a leader. Does that make sense? They have the title and they like the person. They know how to build relationships with the people. So they go, oh, man, yeah, yeah, they're cool. Yeah, I like them. All right, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's my guy. That's my that's my girl right there. Yeah, oh, man, they're awesome, okay? And they know how to build friendships, but they don't know how to build culture. Does that make sense? People like them, but they don't want to be productive. You see? There's an art to that as well. That's the next level of leadership, the third level. OK, is when that person is not just likable, but they're also what respectable, OK, because they do what is it they're asking other people to do. Does that make sense? They do what is it they're asking other people to do. OK, and because of that, you're building a community of productivity where, hey, because you're telling me to do X, Y, Z, and I see that you're doing X, Y, Z, and A, B, C, cool, I have no problem doing it. See what I'm saying? Okay? They lead by example. You ever heard that? You know, you want to make sure you lead by example. Yes, that is one of the definitions of leadership right there. Phase three leadership, to be exact. Okay? You got to be able to lead by example. That's if you're looking to build a large and successful organization. Okay. Number four. See, once you get past that, and finally, you got some people that's willing to follow you and work and apply, right? Because if you're leading by example. Now, the next level of leadership is by you being able to create other leaders. See, when you're a leader that can create leaders, that's the fourth level. Does that make sense? And that's when it gets sexy, right? Because you get excited as you get to see other people elevate, as you get to see people grow, and you feel proud because, you know, you've been working and helping them grow and, and get to the next level and striving towards success, and you just sit there, you smile, you go, yes, and you're rooting for them to continue to go on and on and on and grow and grow and grow. Let's go. Let's get excited. Trust me, there's no better feeling than that. No better feeling than that. Or is there? Yes. The last level of leadership. And that's the fifth level of leadership. The premium, the top of the top, the optimum level of leadership is when your leaders build leaders, where you can step away and the culture still goes, it still moves, it still rocks out, it's still growing. That's when you know you're a top five level leader. See, Dr. London, I can say he's a top five level leader. Me. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm going to get there. You better believe it. And I'm going to work with y'all to make sure that y'all get there. Does that make sense? That's what my goal is. That's what, I'm, well, that's what my mission is. That's what my passion is, is to work with the people that want to be helped, to help the people that want to grow and, and, and just become amazing individuals all around, personally, mentally, financially, spiritually, okay, that want to continue to help people and other pets. That's what I want to do. That's the culture I want to create, where anybody can jump in, no matter whether you're there or I'm there, boom, they continue to grow with or without us. See, once you develop something like that, you can start looking at other people that did that same type of success. It has that same type of mentality. People like who? Jeff Bezos. You know, one thing I learned about Jeff Bezos, who's the owner of Amazon, this was very, very amazing, you know, when I realized or when I heard this. They said, Jeff Bezos, the only thing he works on are projects of the future. I mean, anything that you see Amazon operating, running now, Jeff Bezos, his hands are now out of it. He doesn't touch it. People shipping and packing products, he doesn't touch it. The Amazon Prime video, he doesn't touch it. The people driving the trucks and, and delivering all the stuff. He got his own delivering company now. He doesn't touch it. You can order services and things like that through Amazon. He doesn't touch it. What about their programs where new business people sign up to get their product? He doesn't touch it. It's amazing. He has a trillion dollar company that he doesn't even touch. Except for the projects that you have yet to see. 
That's all his focus is on, getting to the next level, the vision, the growth. That right there is the optimum level of leadership that we're going to get to. Where when you, what, sit back and you see other people growing and creating success in their lives, develop enough income to help pay some bills, develop enough income to pay their mortgage, develop enough income to replace their full-time jobs, develop enough income to retire, develop enough income to not retire their parents, develop enough income to pay their kids' tuition cash. You see? Develop enough income where when a church wants to do a big project, you write the check. You know, when they ask anybody a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, you just write the whole check, what you need. And it hurt your pockets at all. That's what we're building. That's what we're creating. And that's what I'm excited about. Okay. So that being said, in order to get there, ladies and gentlemen, these are the key foundational traits that you need to have. Okay. Some of you have heard it before. Some of you may have never heard this, but it's important for you to understand this. Before I even go into the methods, remember I said the first thing is you need to learn how to become an entrepreneur. So there's certain characteristics, certain traits that you want to carry. And I want you to study when your favorite entrepreneurs. I want you to study them and ask yourself, do they carry this in their own way? And I guarantee you they do. Okay. The first thing is this. Number one, you have to have excitement. You have to have excitement. Well, let's call your three best friends. Excitement, enthusiasm, and confidence. Okay? But you got to be excited about life. You got to be excited about your, your vision. You got to be excited about what you're working towards. Why? Because you better believe there's going to be a lot of people you talk to who aren't. And you can't let that get to you. You got to be enthusiastic about it. Meaning, no matter what's going on, you keep a great attitude. Does that make sense? That's what the definition of being enthusiastic is. No matter, you know, whenever I see that person, they're just so enthusiastic. They always have a smile on their face. You know? You have a hard time being enthusiastic? I, I, I'll tell you this. this. This is my secret. Smile while you talk. Smile while you talk. You, you can't not but be enthusiastic when you smile when you talk. It just comes off. You just get excited. And dopamine begins to flow through you. You know, it's, it's, it's part of life and it's one of your, your biological reactions. When you smile, your brain literally tells you that you're happy, that you're excited. So smile while you talk. Watch how you get enthusiastic. <laughs> I see Ms. Griffin smiling. I know that's, there you go, Ms. Griffin. That's what I'm talking about, man. Get excited, okay? And of course, you want to be what? Confident. Be confident when you talk. Meaning. If I talk to you like this, uh, hello, there's there's this business that you know you um uh that that you can get started in and uh you might be able to make some money. Uh you know, if you ever talk to me like that, I'm not believing you. No, because you don't even believe yourself. Why would I believe in something that you don't even believe in? You see? So you gotta be confident in what it is that you're doing. Be confident in what it is that you're talking about. Okay, and make sure it comes off that way. So I'm gonna put those three together: excitement, enthusiasm, and confidence. When you carry those three right there, no matter what your experience is, I promise you, you'll be able to move somebody. You'll be able to impact people because those three things alone combined at least gets people excited about what you're excited about. You may not know the information, you may not know the products. You may not know the business. You may not know how to explain anything that you just got started in. But the fact that you're that excited about it, the fact that they're that happy and enthusiastic about it, and you're just that much confident what it is that you just saw, it's going to intrigue me enough to move, use my personal power to move, and get on and see what it is that you're talking about, at the very least. Those are your three best friends. You want to be an entrepreneur? Carry those with you at all times. You need to. You lack any of those? I promise you, you're going to lack in your results. So make sure you write that down. Three best friends, excitement, enthusiasm, confidence, okay? Now, here's a few key things, right, that I like to call basics, but it's something that makes or breaks people, okay? And this is, this is good insight. 
A lot of people on here have been involved in network marketing before, but you've never gotten real results in network marketing. You never got results where you could be happy with, or you've never gotten the success that you were seeking. Maybe, you know, you tried it for a few months, maybe six to eight months to a year. And for some reason, you couldn't recruit anybody or you recruit someone, they stayed involved for 3.5 seconds and they left. You spent more money than you made. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that process because it's called what growth you have to grow at some point you know you're going to make mistakes and there's going to need to, some some time that's necessary in order for you to get to the point that you need to be but there are little key things that i'm about to share with you that are nuggets of gold where if you understand what i'm sharing with you here it can literally change your entire business okay and some of those basics is this whether you're going for recruits meaning you're building your business with prospects or you're going for sales okay First thing is your voice tones. Your voice tones. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. Here's what I mean by that. Okay. You ever seen Charlie Brown? Isn't it amazing? And Charlie Brown, whenever they're in the classroom, they're never paying attention. <laughs> you ever notice that? You know? Why? Because the teachers wah 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 wah. It's not exciting. The voice tones are off. It's too monotone, right? Some of you, when you get out and you tell somebody about it, this is how you sound. Hey, how are you? Listen, there's a business that I want to tell you about, and it's going to be very nice. And, you know, I'm really excited about it. And, you know, there's this thing, there's these products, and the products are, you know, you're just straight monotone. There's no fluctuation in your voice tones at all. You know? And because of that, sometimes you come off as robotic. You ever hear people, they say, you know, people in network marketing sound so robotic. They sound like telemarketers, you know? They sound like this, they sound like that. They sound like they don't got any life in them, you know? Like they're just doing what they're told. You know why? It's because you don't know how to work your voice tones yet. You got to fluctuate your voice tones. Perfect example, think about, you know, the preachers that you hear about, you know, in church. You ever hear, you know, the preachers in church? They get real excited, go, yes, and Lord yeah. said, and then they fluctuate their voice tones. You know why they do that? Because it keeps the crowd engaged. It keeps them excited. Well, now, I'll be lying to you if I said I didn't sat through some long sermons and I didn't start uh, dozing off a little bit a few times. I'll be lying if I said I ain't never did that before. Come on. No, you had to. Don't, don't leave me out there. I'm not the only one. Okay, not saying it was right, but you know what I'm talking about. Right? You go like, damn, this is a long sermon. You know, <laughs> they can be preaching a good word and you over here start thinking about something else. You're like, why? Because they're monotone. See, when you're able to fluctuate your voice tones, people are willing to follow you more. Does that make sense? Because you capture their attention. You know how to get excited when you get excited. And then you get real serious and you calm down and you bring them, you fall in real quick, like I'm doing right here, right now. You see, my voice tones are continuing to fluctuate. And because of that, it gets them excited. It keeps them more engaged in what it is that you're talking about. You got to learn how to fluctuate your voice tones. Does that make sense? Boom, golden nugget. Second thing is your posture. Your posture. See, some of you, oh my goodness. The moment you get one little feedback, okay? And, and, and there's the thing. Sometimes people are going to have objections to what it is that you're talking about, okay? Meaning they're asking questions because they're curious and they don't quite understand something all the way 100%, okay? Sometimes people are going to have rejections, meaning they want nothing to do with the opportunity, okay? But because of your posture, your lack of posture, you don't know how to differentiate the both or the, the, the two, right? And you just start acting all out of whack the moment that they have anything to say, you know? Is this one of them pyramid things? Pyramid, pyramid, how dare you pyramid, you know? And you just start trying to defend it. No, you're in the pyramid. Your job is a pyramid. You know, this pyramid, 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 you know? <laughs> you don't know how to explain it, okay? You're getting defensive. You lost your posture. They won. They got you flustered. Does that make sense? They got you flustered. They, they say, man, what are you doing? 
How much success have you made so far? I join when you make money. Oh yeah, well, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got flustered. They won. You lost your posture. See, you gotta learn how to have good posture. And here's what I mean by that. At the end of the day, you got to keep this in mind. This is your business. This is your opportunity. This is your business. Does that make sense? You're not a Nevetica business. Nevetica is your business. Take ownership. You ever go to a job interview and, you know, you feel like you're in the interview? You ever had that? I doubt it. Because if you did, then you probably didn't sign up there. Does that make sense? You probably didn't join. They came in, it was like, all right, well, well you know, when, when you need to start, we need you. We need you badly. Oh my goodness. You know, uh, oh man, we're going through, through so hard times. You know, uh, everybody's quitting. Oh my goodness, we, we need you to join. You're going to be like, what? Oh, 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 that's not hard. Oh, I don't want to do this. Okay. See? They didn't carry good posture. But when you go in there, you go, all right, tell me why you wanted to uh, get started here. And now you're trying to what? Sell yourself. Does that make sense? To get the job, right? You go, oh, well, you know, I, I always come and work on time. I, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. You know, they, the same thing that they hear from everybody. That's what you use it to, you know? <laughs> okay? Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. My point is this. You got to have good posture. You got to have an understanding and know that no matter what they're saying, this is your business. Yeah. For example, I got on a call with Mr. Emmanuel Pulliam one day. Okay. He called me, he said, Mr. Brown, or uh, him and Mr. Bailey, they called me together. He said, Mr. Brown, I talked to this gentleman. You know, he said, you know, the, you know I'm, in, I'm involved with that pyramid type stuff and he's not interested. I said, oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. I did this more so for Mr. Pulliam than I did for the other guy. I just wanted Mr. Pulliam to know and understand what type of business he had, okay? So I said, oh, yeah, we'll call him real quick. Let's have a conversation, okay? And let me tell you something. When that man got on the phone, okay, by the time he got off, he was like, oh, yes, sir, you know, I was never calling it a pyramid. I wasn't trying to say that. I would never disrespect what you were doing. I mean, no, everything just made so much sense. I just I just didn't know if it was for me at the time. That's all. I mean, that's that's all I meant to say. You know, I, I that's all I was trying to explain. You know, I didn't, I didn't mean it. Why? Because my posture was strong. I came on there and I understood what I have is something that you need, okay? What we have is something that we're doing, okay? Whether you do it or not, that's up to you, okay? We're not, we don't need you here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to teach you, okay, about what we have on our hands. What we would understand is your whole job is to educate the uneducated, okay? Help the blind see and allow them to make what? An educated decision. It's not to convince them. It's not to persuade them. And see, the moment you drop that, see, that's what people think sales is. They, they get involved, they think they got to persuade people. They get on sounding like used car salesmen. Hey, how you doing? Listen, well, I got something that you need. I got the best product in the world. This product right here is a... Uh, no. Huh? Sound like a used car salesman. But see, when you come on and you realize what you have on your hands is revolutionary, when you realize what you have on your hands is game-changing, would you realize what you have on your hands is the best thing out there? Mr. Pulliam, do me a favor, Mr. Pulliam. If you're there, sir. Okay, there you go. I see you, sir. Yes, sir. How did you feel, okay, or, or give me an example of, of how he felt, you know, after we finished our conversation with that gentleman? He had nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> he had nothing to say. Well, you told me you told me he did have something to say uh, uh, not too long ago. You know, when you saw him in church the other day. Uh, I can't remember exactly what he said. You said something about his wife. Yes, sir. His oh, wife. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said uh, he he was interested, but his but his wife wants to come on. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, sir. Now his wife want to come on, right? Now he want to sign his wife up all of a sudden. But before he wanted nothing to do with it. Before it was a pyramid, right? And he tried to convince Mr. Pulliam not to do it. But now all of a sudden, his wife needs to sign up and get started in the business. You see? Why? Because I told him about how incredible this industry is. Because I told him how powerful the word of mouth advertising is. Because I told him if he ever did it, the reason why he didn't get results is because he didn't work it. It's because he was lazy. It's because he procrastinated. And he knows that's real. 
The reason why 90% of people found network marketing is because they do it like they do everything else. When they were a kid, they tried to play a trumpet. They didn't sound like Louis Armstrong, so they threw it in the closet. They never went back to it again. That's what the average person does. They pick something up and they put it down two minutes later. You ever wonder why the 5% of, of people in the world own 95% of the wealth? It's because only 5% of people are willing to commit to something long enough to build a successful skill where they've mastered it. Does that make sense? Think about it. What if I told you right now, this is a real number. What if I told you right now that average person makes life-changing income in their network marketing business within five to seven years and I'm being involved in their career? Five to seven years. What if I told you that? That's a real statistic, okay? But most people quit within six months of the business. You see what I'm saying? So the faster you learn these skills, these basic skills I'm telling you, the faster you can learn results, okay? And I want you to learn from example, learn from me. Everything that I'm telling you is something that I've learned from Dr. London. I've applied myself and I was able to experience results in it. Ms. Romanda Ings on the phone right now. She called me randomly yesterday. Okay. She said, Mr. Brown, I'm out in New York. I said, okay. All right, ma'am. Get excited. She said, listen, I got my, my cousin in here. I said, okay. Here, talk to my cousin. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and she just gave me the phone. All right. I had to tell the cousin, I said, okay, all right, you know, well, sir, you know, she can just do me on the phone with you. Okay, I don't know what I'm here to talk to you about, but I figured that we are supposed to talk about something, you know? And so you tell me, are you interested in learning more about the products or are you interested in learning more about the business? He said both. After about 15, 20 minutes, he signed up. Okay, why? Because these things I'm telling you here, my enthusiasm my confidence, my excitement, being able to keep them engaged, even on the phone call with my voice tones, my posture and teaching them, letting them understand that what we have here is the next big thing. It's the next Amazon, it's the next Apple, okay? But also another thing right here that I'm here to tell you is adding value. You have to learn to add value with what it is that you're working with. How do you add value? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. You're talking about the products, you add value through the stories that you share. Why? Because facts tell while stories sell. If you didn't just tune into this call and you missed that call from Ms. Heather Fleener on the common support, oh my goodness, that was so powerful. You better believe, thank you, Ms. Fleener, for sharing that because I will use that as testimony. That was amazing. Well, her being a veterinary technician with years and years and years of experience, of trying to find a common support that would help her dog that had anxiety, not finding anything out there available. But then after trying the Nevetica products, she bought almost the rest of the products within that same 30 days because of the results that she saw, because of how impressed she was with the products. How amazing is that? You see, adding value. That's the product. Did I tell you the ingredients? Not necessarily. Did I go all deep into it? Not necessarily. Is that part of adding value? Sure. Highlight the key ingredients. She shared how it has what? L-tryptophan, which is like when you eat turkey and you kind of get tired, you get the itis, right? Sharing what? Another story. Adding value. But what about the business, Mr. Brown? I understand the products, but what about the business? Okay, well, the business, all right? Here's the thing about the business. A way to add value with the business is highlighting keywords, allowing them to see the vision, putting themselves in a situation that they've probably been in. Here's what I mean. What does everybody know about? Amazon. Just about everybody has shopped from Amazon about once or twice before in their life. And you tell them, what if you would have found Amazon when they were just selling books? And you decide to invest in them. Right now, you invest in Amazon, it's probably going to cost about $1,000 for a fourth of a stock. But what if you would have found them when he was just selling the books? Where would you be? Where would you be? See? 
you wouldn't be here right now. You'd probably be on your own personal yacht. Why? Because you just turn a thousand dollars four four thousand times over. Does that make sense? Okay, it's a lot of money. It's a nice little situation. Right? But unfortunately, you didn't. You missed that ship of opportunity. But you just found one right here, right now. Putting it in perspective, allowing them to see. You heard about Bitcoin. You know what Bitcoin is right now, right? Don't you know Bitcoin? Yeah, I know Bitcoin. I heard about that. I heard about that thing. Well, right now, one Bitcoin is worth about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Okay? Believe it or not, I, I knew of Bitcoin back when it was worth $1.50. Literally, like literally back in 2012, I heard of Bitcoin. It's worth a thousand, a dollar fifty cent. And I was trying to look into it because I heard it's going to be the next big thing. Everybody's going to want to get cryptocurrency, this, this, yada, yada, yada. I was like, you know what? Let me look into this thing because I wanted to invest in it. But it was too hard. It was too confusing. You know, you had to do all this stuff and you had to learn how to mine it and yada, yada, yada. You know, I, I didn't quite understand it. And I realized at that time, see, I couldn't see where it was going, but at that time, everybody was just using it on the black market, right? They were doing all, buying stuff that you shouldn't be buying, you know, doing all this illegal stuff. I was like, I don't want to be part of that. No, I'm not touching that. But see, I didn't see where it was going. Does that make sense? And I missed that ship of opportunity. I remember in college, I bought a $1,000 TV. That's worth about $400 right now. But what if I would have bought $1,000 in Bitcoin? I'd be a millionaire right now. You see what I'm saying? I missed that ship of opportunity. So when I heard about Nevetica, and I see what's happening with Nevetica, I heard about the pet industry. I see the pet industry is growing like crazy, right? And people are treating their pets like what now? They're not pets anymore. They're now what? And everybody knows. They all say family, children, right? My son, my daughter. It puts in perspective. See, you're allowing them to see the vision. You're adding value to the opportunity by putting them in the shoes of someone that thinks business. Does that make sense? So sharing stories is how you share value where you get them to see the picture without saying, hey, look, this is what it's going to be. Does that make sense? I know it does, because it does. It just makes sense. Come on out, get excited, right? I'm giving y'all all my secrets. Why? Because I want you to become successful. I want you to grow. I want you to go to the next level. I want you to build a large organization. I want you to have a large customer base. I want you to become even more successful than me. Yes, I do. And when you do, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to cheer you on. I'm going to be that much more proud of you. Does that make sense? Okay. But also understand this. I'm very competitive. So when you start getting close to me, I'm going to keep on pushing that much more. I'm like, no, I can't let you beat me. Yeah. But if you do, trust me, I'm going to be nothing but excited. Yeah. So that being said, there's one more thing, one more basic that I want you to understand. That's going to help you with both the sales and help, help you with prospecting and recruiting. You ready? This is the key. This is the key. If you're ready, I want you to go in the chat and type in ready. If you're ready to hear this last key, this last golden nugget, and you've been getting value after value after value after value on this call, I know we're over our seven-minute time frame, but if you want this last one, I want to make sure that you want it. Go in the chat and type in ready. Okay? I'm seeing it all over. Good. It means y'all paying attention. Okay? The last key. If you want to get results, if you want to get sales, if you want to get prospects, you have to know how to take it away. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, that is golden. I'm here to tell you. See, when you tell people I'm not pressed for you, when you tell people I don't need you, when you tell people, hey, no, remember, this is mine not yours, okay? It makes them understand and, and realize, hey, hold on, let me check myself, make sure I'm not missing out on something, you know? It's gonna make them double back and think about it, okay? Will it work 100% of the time? Not necessarily, but guess what? It does make them think, I promise you that, okay? And here's what I mean. 
Imagine I'm two different people, person A and person B, okay? Imagine at one point I'm coming to you, I'm telling you all about the Nevada opportunity, and then I'm going, do you want to join? Are you going to join? Can you join? Can you, can you sign up today? Do you want to sign up today? Can you do it? You know, come on. You want to be my business partner? Do you? Do you? Do you? Huh? 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 I'm like, no. No. Oh, why you need me so much? No. See, you made them feel like you need them more than they need you. Never let, never let anybody feel like that. Does that make sense? Again, this is your business. And if you ever feel like that, it's only because you have yet to, number one, learn how to become an entrepreneur. And number two, learning how to become a network marketer. Does that make sense? And then number three, learning how to become a professional network marketer. Never once will you ever hear a professional network marketer come on off needy like they need somebody to sign up. Because they already got results. Why do I need you to sign up? If anything, you need me because I know how to get to the point where I'm at. You going paycheck to paycheck, you struggling to get results in your life, you struggling to pay bills, okay? You behind, you locked up in debt, you going deeper, deeper, deeper in debt, and you think I'm gonna make you feel like, like what I'm doing is something illegal or I need you to join me or I'm scamming you, why would I do that? No, I don't need you to do this. Fine, you think that way, you continue being where you are in life. But I'll tell you what, let me continue to work with the people that want it, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them. See? That's taking it away. See what I'm saying? That's taking it away. I remember Mr., uh, I believe it was Mr. Bailey, Mr. Ray, and Mr. Donnell. Um, one day, uh, we were at a hotel room before we even launched Nevetica. We were giving meetings, telling everybody the vision about what we are creating, all different types of stuff. And right next to us, there was a ballroom of people that were involved with real estate, okay? And we were like, ooh, everybody in there is trying to learn real estate. They're trying to build an extra income stream, you know? This would be great people to talk to to see if they'd be open-minded to, you know, and then another income stream, get involved in the pet industry. So as they were coming out, there was a young lady that came out, okay? I'll never forget, she was close to my age, maybe about a year or two younger. I was about 26, so she had to be about 24, maybe 25, okay? And she was from the islands. I sat down there, I talked to her, and I was saying, you know, why did you come here to the, to the real estate event? She's like, oh, well, you know, I just wanted to get involved in real estate. And I was thinking about making some money in here. I said, okay, but well, what did you think? She said, oh, it was cool. You know, but I, I went to the event for free to learn something, but really I feel like I have to invest the money to learn a lot more. I said, okay, well, do you think you're going to do it? She said, I don't know, I'm thinking about it. I said, okay, well, I'll tell you what. I said, I'm actually uh, right next door to a person that's a proven multimillionaire, okay, who has created other millionaires, and he's done it from an industry working from home, okay? And I told her, and she said, well, what is it? I said, I can't go too deep in detail. I'll give you a little insight. It has to do with pets, okay? And as I say that, I'm pulling out my business card, okay? And I'm giving it to her. I say, is that something that you think that you'd be interested in, Okay. And she reached for it, she grabbed my business card, and she said, no. <laughs> she said, no, no, thank you, but I'll take your card. And what I did while she was taking it is I snatched it back, okay? I said, it's no problem that you're not interested, but you won't need my card, you know? I'd like to save this for someone else that would be interested, if you don't mind. Put it back in my card, I mean, put it back in my pocket, and kept it moving.com, okay? If you saw her face, she was like, okay. Now, why did I do that? For a few reasons. Number one, she told me she wasn't interested. Why would I give you my card if you're not interested? No, that's, that's me wasting my money. That's my precious business card. No, okay? Number one. Number two, okay, I'm taking it away because it's going to make her think about the opportunity. Does that make sense? See, it's something about you know, losing out on something, right? You ever seen like, uh, you, ever, you ever go to, nah, I know this, this is fat. I know y'all don't judge me. You ever go to, you know, a store or something like that and you saw a snack and it was the last one that was there, you know, just the last one, you know, and you knew that somebody else said that they wanted it too. And then you think, oh man, I got to grab that before they want it, you know? You might not even be hungry, but you know it's tasty. You know, if you don't get it, you're going to miss out. Okay, maybe that's just me. Sorry, I'm, I'm fat. 
Okay, that was a fat boy story. I know, I know. But I would not grab that snack. Why? Because I understood if I didn't get it, I was gonna miss out on the taste of goodness. Okay. In a sense, that's what's happening with the opportunity. Does that make sense? Okay. That's what was happening with the opportunity. When you learn how to take it away, not being rude, being professional. Does that make sense? Okay. And you learn how to take it away. It's going to make people feel like there's a sense of urgency. Okay. It's a sense of urgency. Meaning if I don't take advantage of this now, or if I don't move forward with this, I may miss out. And there's no knowing whether or not I'll be able to get something like this ever again. See what I'm saying? So you got to learn and you got to master how to take it away. Okay. I'll give you one more example. Whenever I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one call, okay, and I'm starting to sense, you know, when you start doing a business enough, you'll sense when someone's starting to feel like, eh, I don't know, eh, you know, here's something I say, okay, say so if you don't do this, I got no problem with that. You know, my job is just to put you in front of the information and allow you to make an educated decision. But I will tell you this, if you don't think that people love their pets, if you don't think that people want to take care of their pets, if you don't think that people will kill just to have another day, another year, nonetheless, two years, with a pet that has passed away and they wish they could have done something else, okay? Well, I promise you this. Don't be surprised if your neighbor, cousin, brother, aunt, uncle, right? Sister's dog is knocking on your door then these next couple of years asking you, have you ever heard about Nevetica? And you wanna sit back and you gonna go, oh my goodness, yes, yes, I heard about that. You know about them? Yes, I'm involved, you know? You, you wanna get started? What you mean you're involved? When did you get started? Oh, just not too long ago. When did you hear about them? Oh my goodness, I heard about them when they were just getting started. When they're in the very beginning. Well, why didn't you get involved? See what I'm saying? Okay, and understanding that the people that get involved in the early stages are the people that are put in position to make the most income. Okay, does that mean it's going to happen that way every single time? Not necessarily. There's people that get involved five years later that can make more money than someone got involved the day one. They work harder. They understand the business more. They take it that much more serious. But as it relates to the timing of the opportunity, when you get involved on the ground floor level in a network marketing company, here's the inside scoop, okay? What the company does is they make the compensation plan extremely lucrative. Meaning, if you take it serious, you actually start working it, you can trust and believe you will begin seeing some results. My first network marketing company, I did it for a year and a half. The highest check I ever made was $56. $56 in a year and a half. We have someone that's been involved for a few months and they made $4,000 in one month. Come on now. So if you made a check over $50, congratulations. You beat me already. You're in a better position than I'm in, than I was in when I got started network marketing. Congratulations. Get excited about that. But you see the person I am today right now, it didn't matter where I started, right? It matters where you finish. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you finish. See, some people, they get involved and they get close to the founders. They learn the information from the executives. They get to learn from the CEO and you hear it so much and maybe you might take it for granted. You can take it for granted if you want to. But watch the ones that stay grateful. Watch the ones that receive the information. They apply it. Watch the ones that continue to grow and try to turn every opportunity of learning into what? An actual learning opportunity. See, sometimes you get on the call, you press the mute button, and you like to make it fake like you're there, like you're listening in, like you're tuning in. You know? Let me call you, ask you if I can see some, some, some notes. And you go, what? Uh, oh, no, I didn't take any notes. Oh, why not? Uh, and you make up some excuse, you know? And I'm not just saying that for the people that's driving. If you're driving, trust me, don't take no notes. I'm glad that you want to call, you know, 
and y'all showing too, like Miss Romanda Ings right now. She on the call, you know, and she put the video on the show. I'm tuning in, but I'm also listening, you know? And so that being said, okay, please take advantage of the opportunity and the timing of the opportunity. Because eventually what happens is somebody's going to pop and make it big. And when they do, it's going to motivate some of y'all. You're going to go, my goodness, I can't believe it. Miss Camise Williams, I remember the day she got involved and she signed up and now she's a millionaire. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Miss April Brooks, she's going to go, oh, no, I'm not letting that happen. No, if she did that, I'll watch what I did. She's going to hop in. So, somebody else pop up. Do we have two millions in the company? Miss Baker, she gonna go, uh-uh, Mom Baker? No, no, uh-uh, I've been in this too long. I'm gonna make sure I get there. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, eventually what happens is the company starts creating too much success stories, okay? To the point where it's not even that exciting anymore. So what they do is they slow down the growth. Not the growth for the company, the growth of the distributors by changing the compensation plan. That's why when you join that company, when it was 30, 20, 40, 50 years old, you know, you was excited about it. You went to the big conventions. You saw the people up on stage. You was talking about how they was making, you know, $60,000 a month, $100,000 a month, a million dollars a month. You sitting there going, oh my goodness, a million dollars a month? People making that in this? Yes. Yes. People are making a million dollars a month. You don't believe me? Go to Google, type in top network marketing earners. 2021. Go ahead. I want you to do it. Please do it for me. And then text me. Send me a message on Messenger when you get a chance and tell me what you see. Go ahead. Type in top network marketing earners 2021. Okay. And I want you to look from list one, uh, one to a thousand. Okay. Because I've never been in any type of contest that I want to be in a thousandth place. I've never heard that before. I never want to be in that position. But I'll tell you what, when it comes to that list, I wouldn't mind being in a thousandth place. Okay, and you let me know what you see. Let me know when you did your research, you checked it out. I want you to message me, okay? And tell me what you saw, please, please do that. Okay, I want you to. Now, once you do so, what you'll realize is this, what I'm here to tell you, 90% of them found a company in the beginning stages. When it was just getting started, it was at the very beginning. This is the last thing I'm gonna say because I'm well over my time, ladies and gentlemen, okay? But you know, there's so many new people in here. I just wanted to you know, take some time to be able to talk with you guys, give you some really good information, right? Give you some really good insight you know, of what to expect in this business and this opportunity and the industry of network marketing to you know, work and elevate your skills to become a professional. You know, Learn number one, how to become an entrepreneur by understanding the mindset that you need to have, the growth mindset, right? Not a fixed mindset, not I wasn't born to do this. I wasn't born to do that. I, this isn't one of my gifts. No, uh -uh. these aren't gifts. These are skills. Does that make sense? Communication is a skill. You can, you can work on it. Trust me. Believe me. Was I always the best communicator? Absolutely not. You know, I used to say all types of slang and this, this, that, you know. Oh, man, you talk to me in college. You ever look at the Facebook memories? And, you know, you see some Facebook memories. You go, oh, my goodness. Okay, see, some of y'all say that about the clothes that you used to wear. Okay, I would say that about the post I used to make. You know, you ever seen the post where it was like some capital letters, some lowercase letters, you know, and you writing all this stuff that doesn't make sense, you know, like trying to explain or trying to write a word and you're writing it wrong on purpose? It was just extremely distasteful. You know, to be honest with you, I look back and I just shook my head. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I used to write that. You know, why? Okay, because I was young. Don't judge me. Okay, don't judge, brother. But I will tell you this, I grew. I learned how to become a great communicator. Does that make sense? <laughs> Y'all hide and delete in the comments, right? I know, I know. I was like, no, can nobody see this? Oh my goodness, that was 10 years ago. No, hide it. This is getting locked up in Facebook memories. <laughs> Never to be seen again, okay. But that being said, right, you have to learn how to become a great communicator. And when you do, you'll notice, not just you, but your team growing, your sales growing, your business growing. 
I went to a, an event one day with um, Dr. London. He won an Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Okay, it was this big convention. You know, some big time uh, influencer. You know, he was giving out awards to a lot of successful business owners that day. And we went to um, the National Harbor. Okay, at the Gaylord. Okay, it was the, the Gaylord is a big convention center. It's amazing. It's beautiful there. Okay, um, they have a waterfall in the inside. You know, it's 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 I mean, absolutely amazing. It's gorgeous in there. Okay, well. We go in a convention, and as it's out, you know, everybody's going around just networking. But at the same time, there's another convention of where we are. So I'm nosy, right? Because in my mind, in my mind, I'm like, well, if people are here for business conventions, they may be good people to talk to, right? Who knows? They may be great prospects for the business to become business partners with. Let me go over there and network and see who I can meet. Okay. And as I'm walking over, I see this guy. He looks like a like a young professional football player, but he's just a suited and booted, looking really, really sharp. He's taking pictures. Okay, looking really sharp. Now I'm sitting there, I'm waiting, because I'm like, look, if this guy's a professional football player, I'm definitely recruiting him, you know? He could do great things in this. Now, how many people does he know that have pets that will probably buy products from just because he's a football player, right? So I'm sitting there waiting for him. And as I'm waiting, an even sharper guy, I mean, this guy's in a three-piece suit. I mean, su super crispy. Oh, my God, I couldn't believe it. He walks over, okay? I'm like, and he starts standing next to me. I'm like, do you know this guy? He said, yes, I do. That's my business partner. I said, oh, really? He said, yes, really. So, well, what do you do? He said, well, I have an international business. An international business doing what? He said, well, I have gas and electricity. So in my head, I'm like, a gas and electricity business internationally? He must be a network marketer, okay? So I asked him, just because I knew we was at that convention, right? And all these people here, if you're part of that, it had to be network marketing. So I asked him, I said, are you involved in network marketing? He said, yes, I am. He told me what company he was involved with. I said, wow. Okay, that's an old company. He said, yes, it is. I said, well, if you don't mind me asking, because I know that's a very successful company, how large is your organization? Like I said, I'm nosy, y'all. I want to know, okay? Because he looked real sharp. He looked like he had some money, okay? Well, he goes and tells me this. He says, well, keep in mind, my company is about an $800 million company. Okay, the company he's part of. He didn't own it, but he's part of it. He said, but I'll tell you this. I have a third of the entire organization in my team. I'm like, literally my jaw dropped. Okay. I said, hold on. Matter of fact, I'll tell y'all the company because some of y'all probably heard of it. It's called ACN, right? So I'm like, a third of ACN is in your organization? He said, yes, it is. He said, the entire continent of Australia is under my team. I said, are you serious? He said, very serious. I said, oh my goodness. Okay. Now I looked at my business partner that was with me because I took him with me, right? I had to have my road dog. You know, if I'm out recruiting, I always bring somebody with me, you know, so we can both work and team together. They can learn from me, you know, they can take some of those skill sets from what I'm doing. And plus, they'll motivate me. You know, if they go out recruiting, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna recruit too. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, we're going head to head. Well, I got I had a person with me. His name is Aaron Ray. Okay, he's out on his honeymoon right now. He just got married, you know, so. You'll see him, you'll learn him, amazing guy, okay? But he was with me. I kind of gave him an elbow like this because I wanted him to pay attention. I was about to ask a very serious question. Now, I wanted him to really understand what was about to be said, okay? And so I asked him, I said, sir, if you don't mind me asking, because I'm involved with network marketing, I understand, you know, um, what is that you just said and how powerful that is. When did you get involved in the organization? Okay, now keep in mind, this company's 30 years old, okay? So he said, I got involved five years after the company launched. And I, I hit Mr. Ray like this, <clears throat> okay? Why? Because I hope he heard that. He got involved in the beginning. Now, keep in mind, five years is just the cutoff before they start changing the comp plan, you know, and they start making it harder, okay? Because remember, I said, how long does it take? For the average person to start creating really big results in network marketing, five to seven years, okay? For the average person. Now, here's the thing. Him being put in that position, 
earn a third of the entire company under him. Okay? Now I want you to understand this, because that's powerful. Imagine $800 million, a third of that, is about $250,000, um, $250 million. Imagine you're getting a percentage of $250 million every year. Even if it's just 1%, what's that? $2.5 million. Make it $2.5 million residually. That's just 1%. Okay. Typically, just a roundabout number, usually you make anywhere between eight to 12% of whatever your group organization is. That's usually how marketing plans typically pay out. Okay. So he's probably making a whole lot more money than that. But I just wanted to give you a roundabout number on a low end. That's how powerful that is. That's how amazing being put in a position at a time like it is that he was in. But he was what? Five years being involved, ladies and gentlemen. What about the person that found it within the first year? Like the 39 people that's on this call right now. You see what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Hopefully you're receiving what it is I'm sharing with you. Now, am I guaranteeing you're going to be a millionaire? No, because I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going to do. Okay. I can't promise you those results. Does that make sense? But I will promise you this. Somebody's going to do it. Does that make sense? Somebody's going to do it. I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about Mr. Bangor. I'm not talking about any of the founders. I'm talking about you all, the distributors. Somebody's going to do it. And it's going to be more than one person. And I can't wait to see it happen. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, and merge lines at that, right? Come on now, get excited, okay? Now, here's the thing, okay? As the years go on, and a company becomes 10, 20, 30 years old, does that mean people can't make money anymore? Absolutely not. No matter how old the company is, people could still get involved and make 10, 20, $30,000 a month, okay, with some hard work and time and effort. However, and this is the last thing I'm sharing with you, the same effort it took them to take to make 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars a month, okay, years later, is the same effort it takes for you to make millions. Right now, right here, in the timing that you found it. So hopefully you took these notes of what it is I share with you. Carrying your excitement, carrying your enthusiasm, carrying your confidence. That's why I'm sharing these stories with you, so you can be excited. So you can be confident what it is that you just heard, because now you're starting to understand network marketing a whole lot more. Do you believe out there, 80% of people in the world don't understand network marketing? Yeah? And believe it or not, 85% of people involved with network marketing don't even understand network marketing. There are people that actually join companies that are just trying to do something. They don't even understand it, majority of them. But see, what I just shared with you, hopefully it clicked. We're finally you starting to get it. Finally, you're starting to understand what it takes to get results. Finally, you're starting to understand the type of opportunity that you have on your hands. So you can be enthusiastic and it be real. So you can be confident and it be real. So you can be excited and it be 100% authentic, okay? But I also want you to work on your voice tone. I want you to work on your posture and the way you carry yourself, the way you speak to people. I want you to be able to add value to your business and to your products. Last but not least, I want you to master the ability of taking it away. Okay? And when you do that, watch what happens to your results. Watch what happens to your sales. Watch what happens to your team. As you all continue to grow and take off. Okay? So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I wanted to share with you, okay? I'm well over my time, okay? About 35 minutes past my time, but this is what I want to do. I want to wrap up the call in the right way, okay? So we have our very own, ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Henderson. Are you still there, sir? You still on the call? You know, I'm not going anywhere, sir. There we go. <laughs> yes, sir. not. You know, um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, about my voice. You know, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Super great call, sir. Absolutely. I mean, you you really put it down. It took me down memory lane. And and I, as I watched you grow, sir, and you just become so proud of you. And so uh, absolutely great call. Super great call. I mean, from the very beginning, Miss Trosper laid it down, did an excellent job. Miss uh, Fleetner, always, always, always. So the only thing that we can do for you all that, that are brand new, we always connect with Source. We always connect with Source. So, you know, we, we can't go any higher than this call. And the only way to do it is that we connect with the right Source. So all hearts and minds are clear. Father, we thank you right now. We just give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you, thank you, thank you that you did not leave us to our own devices, that you not leave us to our own understanding, God, that, that you brought us to a place that somebody tapped us on the shoulder and gave us away. We were praying. <laughs> Some of us were didn't even know we were looking. But God, you were looking out for us. And so we thank you for Nevada, your pet's choice. We thank you for the visionary. We thank you, you know, for the person who always does it at a high level, the right posture, the right attitude, the right energy, the right voice tones, Dr. Lance London. And we thank you for those that you surrounded him with, that you do not leave him alone, that you surrounded him with a mastermind alliance, the executive team, especially our upline founders. Mr. and Mrs. Brown. And we thank you for this great call. We thank you, you know, for uh, Ms. Trosper. We thank you for Ms. Fleetner and again, Mr. Brown, as they poured out to us, as you pour back into them. And I continue to pray for everyone on this team, every person that's on this call, every soul represented. I come after lack like a lion, that they will never experience lack in their lives, but the full measure of shalom. We thank you. We bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, and we do it in the name of your son, Yeshua. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Wonderful. Amen. Thank you.